Hello, I'm Lee, and I'm going to do a video today on insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. Um, we're going to talk about metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, but most importantly, we're going to talk about fat storage. We're going to talk about under what conditions do you store fat and what conditions do you burn fat. So if you're on a weight loss journey like I have been and you want to burn some fat, this is a discussion about how that mechanism works. How does that process works? Um, and it has a lot to do with the way we eat and the way we process sugar and the way insulin works in our body. So let's talk about insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. Those are opposites. You're either very resistant to insulin or you're very sensitive to insulin or you're somewhere in between. And if you're resistant to insulin, uh, we start to call that metabolic syndrome, and metabolic syndrome can turn into type 2 diabetes. Now, historically, doctors have thought of type 2 diabetes as a progressive, lifelong, chronic disease. Um, but doctors are realizing that that's just simply not true, that you can cure type 2 diabetes, and you can cure metabolic syndrome, and you can cure insulin resistance by increasing your insulin sensitivity. Um, what a lot of people do is when they have type 2 diabetes, they eat a bunch of carbohydrates, eat a bunch of sugars, and then they take insulin. And that insulin, supplemental, injectable insulin, actually makes the problem a lot worse. And we're going to talk about that. And it leads to more and more fat storage and worse and worse type 2 diabetes. So we're going to avoid that whole cycle, and we're going to talk about how to cure metabolic syndrome. So let's talk about how this process works. You get your muscles and you want to be able to pick up something heavy. And to lift something, to move your muscles, to be alive, your energy is in the form of ATP. This is your chemical energy that your body uses to move, to be alive. And this chemical energy comes out of a cycle. Um, that cycle is the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. This cycle um, spits out ATP and your muscles will use that ATP for energy. So the question is, what feeds into the, the uh, citric acid cycle? Well, there's a couple chemicals that get in the way, uh, pyruvate and so forth, but for the most part, for our discussion, we're gonna start with glucose. Now, glucose will feed into a chemical process, including the citric acid cycle, and it comes out as ATP, and you use that for energy. So. Where does this glucose come from? Well, it's in your muscles and it's stored as glycogen. You have glycogen stores in your muscle. Um, and it's there so that you have readily available energy to create ATP. So how does it get in your muscle? Well, it starts off, you put sugar in your mouth and it goes down your esophagus into your stomach. It gets processed in the liver, and here's your liver, here's your stomach, and that sugar becomes blood sugar. It gets distributed around your body, in your blood, and then it gets stored in your muscle in the form of glycogen. So that muscle um, tissue is storing energy for you. You also have glycogen stored in your liver all over the place. You got glycogen here and glycogen there, and you got glycogen in your blood and floating around your body, and this is energy that's ready for you to use. So that's great. You eat sugar, you have energy. Great. So what happens when you eat too much sugar? Well, you can see here that this muscle is full of glycogen, and you've eaten a lot of sugar, and then you come along and you eat some more sugar. And um, your muscle's full of glycogen, so it doesn't want to accept any more glycogen from your blood. So you have all this blood sugar, and you want to clear out that blood sugar, and you want to push it into your muscles, but your muscles won't take it. So you create in your pancreas, you create a chemical called insulin, a hormone, and that insulin tries to push that sugar into your muscle, into your cells, and uh, your your muscles, your tissue are just saying, hey, I, I got enough glucose, thank you anyway, and you ignore the insulin hormone. So that's called insulin resistance. Your tissue, your muscles, your cells are resistant to insulin. 
So what do some people do? Some people, they will take a syringe and they will shoot themselves up and they inject insulin into their subcutaneous skin there. And then that supplements the insulin that's created by your pancreas. Now your muscle tissue has this overexposure to insulin, a higher dose than you can create naturally. And the cells say, oh, well, if you insist, if you really want to give me that much insulin, then I'll start storing even more glycogen in my muscles. But your muscles were already full of glycogen, and now they're over full of glycogen. And you keep doing that over and over and over again when you have type 2 diabetes. Um, what, what would happen is if you didn't force that glycogen into your muscles, it goes through your stomach, it gets into your liver, and your liver says, oh, I got too much sugar, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to create lipids, and I'm going to create triglycerides, and I'm going to create uh, uh, um, fat tissue, and I'm going to take that fat and I'm going to push it around in the blood, and I'm going to move it around to different parts of the body. I'm going to store some fat right here actually in the liver. Um, but I'm going to take these lipids and triglycerides and I'm going to push them around and we're going to store those in a big fat belly. And that's what happens. We, we end up taking the excess sugar in the liver, we turn it into fat, then we distribute it around the body, and then it gets stored as fat around the body. So we end up with a fatty liver, we end up with high sugar, we end up with a big belly, we end up with um, a high A1C, it can cause blindness, and it just piles right up and gives you all kinds of problems, all kinds of things that shorten your life and it shortens your wellness. So what we can do is um, we can just simply not eat as much sugar. And when we don't eat that much sugar, what happens is um, we have just enough of it stored. Um, some people don't eat sugar at all or they don't eat very much sugar. They, they have a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet or something like that where they have a very low sugar content. And then your citric acid cycle starts producing ATP from ketones, um, which is another way that you can make energy. Um, and in that case, we're taking fat off of the gut, putting it back into the liver, um, and we're gonna create more glycogen from the fat. We're actually taking the stored fats and we're going to turn that into glycogen and we're going to take that glycogen and store it in your muscles. So when you're not eating sugar, your body is taking your body fat, your liver is taking your body fat, turning it into sugar and then storing it in your muscles so you can convert it over to ATP. It's taking your body fat and it's converting it over to ketones so you can use that for ATP. So the big problem that we're trying to avoid here is by putting too much sugar in our mouths, it fills up the sugar in our muscles, in our liver, it gives us a natural resistance to the insulin, um, and that eventually kills us. Um, and the way you get around that is by building up your insulin sensitivity, and you do that through either eating a low sugar diet, or let's call it at least a moderate sugar diet, and uh, you can do that by fasting. When you have intermittent fasting, if you don't eat for 24 hours, it builds up your insulin sensitivity because your insulin level drops low when you fast for 24 hours or 36 hours or 48 hours. And when you do that, that makes your muscles extra sensitive to the insulin. So the key takeaway here is that eating sugar stores fat and not eating sugar burns fat. It's really quite that simple. So I hope you can take something away here. I hope that you can understand how insulin and sugar play a role with fat storage and energy. All right, thanks.